We Infuse Podcast, episode number 51. Welcome to the We Infuse Podcast. My name is Amanda Brummett. In every episode, we give you a seat at the table as we talk to Infusion Center owners, operators, and experts so that you can get the insight you need to run a thriving practice. In this episode, we have three amazing guests. Sarah Linares joins us from Change Healthcare. She is their Vice President of Partner Sales. And Brian Johnson and Cecile Franca from the We Infuse team are here with us today. Brian is our co-founder and chief executive officer. Cecile is our vice president of operations. Sarah, Brian, and Cecile share how their collaboration allows practices to utilize technology to streamline their workflows, reduce duplicative work, and ultimately deliver a better patient experience. Well, Brian, Cecile, and Sarah, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. We really appreciate it. And Sarah, I'm going to dive right in with you. If you can share a little bit about your background, how you got to change, and tell us about your current role there. You bet. Thanks for having me. So Sarah Lanares and I have a background in healthcare technology. For the last 20 years, I've made it my mission to help the transformation that we're still undergoing in the healthcare industry uh, in the U.S. and across, across the globe. And in terms of how I got to change, it was a tremendous opportunity that opened up in 2019, just before the pandemic, to play a part in building a partner strategy, especially around developers, uh, those that are innovating in healthcare and building the future of healthcare are the types of relationships Change Healthcare was looking to build. So I came to help fulfill that vision. Oh, that's fantastic. And then can you tell us how change partners with companies like We Infuse? You bet. Well, we're really in the background supporting those innovators, those that are in the you know, front lines with software services, people uh, delivering care, transforming care. And companies like We Infuse are great candidates for us because we can support the vision with data APIs uh, to support the software or the analytics and data that's needed to drive that innovation and drive that change that we want to see in healthcare. Oh, fantastic. And I can imagine with what a technology company we infuse is that that's a really fun collaboration. Indeed it is. Thank you. Yeah. So Brian and Cecile, can you tell us a little bit about your backgrounds? I know a lot of our listeners already know who you guys are, but um, give us a recap and tell us what you do at we infuse. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm Cecile Franca. I'm our VP of operations. Um, I have been here for about three and a half years. I started out on the enterprise implementation side to help some of our larger clients um, kind of transition over to to We Infuse and get started. Um, Now I help to support kind of our entire client success implementation support team in Austin. And I have been very involved in the the launch of our new billion claims module. So I've had the chance to work with the entire change healthcare team uh, quite a bit recently. And Cecile's being uh, modest. She also does quite a bit of product and QA work here. So she's very involved on the claim side and development as well. Um, I'm Brian Johnson. Thank you for having me again. And nice to see everyone here. Uh, I am one of the co-founders of We Infuse. I have a background in infusion center operations. It was the uh, nerdy thing I did right out of college is start an infusion center. I'm pretty sure I'm the only graduate of Baylor University that did that. Um, but spent sure. several years really learning the business. It was a new, it was really a new business back in the um, early 2000s. Um, really got our software chops because we needed to build something in our own uh, environment uh, to, to support what we were doing. We really couldn't find a software. So uh, my other co-founder, Reese, had the bright idea. He said, let's just build our own software, which was a really, thought it was a terrible idea at the time, but it all worked out. Um, several fast forward several years, we sold that business and the software to a larger uh, company. And then, you know, as entrepreneurs, you spend a little bit of time with the the new company and we really enjoyed the time there and learned a lot, but we, you know, we had an itch to scratch as entrepreneurs. And so we came back to the software, this piece we really liked and the part we felt we could scale. So we founded, we infuse about six years ago today, um, good old fashioned healthcare startup, blank sheet of paper. And, you know, we've been growing that business quite a bit, but we never really had the claims piece to our software. So we were always working on workflows and patient workflows and treatments. And um, lo and behold, we decided that we needed really needed that last mile, which is actually send and receive the claim, the revenue cycle piece, um, did a lot of searching and, and found change. And so that's kind of what started this relationship and took us to where we are today. But I'm the I'm the CEO. I'm also uh, really here in the Austin office with our development client success team 
you know, folks that sort of build build the product and get it shipped out and support our customers. So I'm, I'm here with Cecile and Austin with that team. Awesome. Now, for people that aren't familiar with the billing and claims feature set, can you guys sort of walk them through what that is and then what role change plays in it? Sure, absolutely. So uh, our our application sits in the space. Um, we're in the medical benefits space. So think physician office, go to your specialty doctor. That's where the, the claims and billing for that moves, uh, which is different than the pharmacy space. We can talk about here at the uh, maybe later on in the podcast. So we... Um, the, we, we infuse never actually sent the claim. We always had integrations with other EHR systems like eClinical Works, um, you know, Athena, G Centricity. We think about all the different EHRs, but more and more of our business was in this space, really, which is new, the standalone infusion center space where there there really is no uh, physician office. It's really a an office space that is just dedicated to serving patients in the community that need. Um, either specialty injections, biologic therapies, infusions, or antibiotics in that space. So as we continue to grow into that space, we really needed to be able to actually send the claim out of We Infuse. So um, that feature set includes, um, you know, sending and receiving medical benefit claims on the professional services side, it includes scrubbing those claims before they go out the door to make sure they're correct, receiving remittance files and posting corrected claims, and just all the goodness that uh, runs in and out of change healthcare. Uh, we had already adopted Change Healthcare's eligibility suite for our clients, and so we were already somewhat familiar with the team. Um, we were actually inherited from a previous purchase of a company called Pocket Doc at Change, so we we kind of got brought in uh, through an acquisition. But that new feature set really is the last mile for our software. It really allows uh, uh, an office to put an order in for a medication, do all of what we call the pre-treatment workflow, including that fun eligibility and benefits check. Uh, authorizations and all those good things. And then once the treatment note is completed in our software and we infuse, now we can actually send the claim and manage that revenue cycle workflow. So um, we're really excited. We have a long, long list of clients ready to go that we're trying to onboard as fast as we can. Yeah, absolutely. Who doesn't love better throughput and less pieces of technology where we get it all done? That's fantastic. So, um, Brian, do you want to circle back to the pharmacy side that you mentioned before we move on? No, let's let's talk about that later in our uh, okay. future updates conversation. Perfect. Yeah. You got it. Okay. So, speaking of the future, what does the future look like for Change, Sarah, and um, for We Infuse, um, Brian and Cecile? Yeah. Well, Brian, you you acquired those uh, Pocket Doc, you know, I think eligibility API around the time that Change Healthcare acquired Pocket Doc, right? And then mm-hmm. short after launched into me joining and us building that out. So first one, I just thank you for being on that journey with us. We're so glad that it's, you know, it's been a key part of the value you're able to deliver your customers and meeting, meeting the revenue cycle capabilities that you've evolved to require. Uh, the future for us looks like continuing to add and expand the number of APIs uh, and data that we make available in this API format. We've invested in even marketplace and developer experience and community areas so that it's as easy as possible for a product team, an engineering team, a customer success team like Brian and Cecile have, right, uh, to use these things, get them into their product quickly, uh, expect high availability and uh, expect that they can keep coming, you know, back to this API uh, developer marketplace to get more pieces as they need it, as things change, just like what we see with, you know, starting out with eligibility and now moving on to claims. Yeah, great. No, I think that's, that's excellent. We were, and we didn't talk a little, we didn't talk about it yet, but we, we had several clearinghouse options, right? Companies to work with. And we looked at who are we going to send and receive our claims through, um, we we did evaluate some of the other options in the market and really found out that Change Healthcare had the most robust set of you know documented APIs using you know modern communication standards and things that um, I always say our developers like to work with. There are other APIs we work with that you know we work with them, but we don't like to work with them. They're in older languages. They're EDI and uh, or XML or some of these kind of older standards. So it's easier on us as a development team and even product folks like myself and Cecile to uh, manage it when it's in a more modern language and it has modern documentation. So we were just really pleased that change had made such a developer friendly uh, setup and they were so open to feedback on that. So um, that was the reason why we selected change. And then we saw change also investing in the future there. 
um, early on, um, got to meet some folks on the change team, really got the confidence from them that they weren't just going to, this wasn't going to be like a, um, a legacy piece that they supported, but it was something we're actually pouring dollars into modernizing that architecture and then bringing on more and more capabilities. And for us being a newer entry to the rev cycle market, uh, you know, we wanted to go, we wanted to be with the partner that was moving forward. We didn't want to be with the one that was, you know, getting stale. So, um, Future for us really looks like continued to adopt the existing change API platform that that are out there. Uh, We are getting ready to adopt the rules engine integrated rules, which is what we call claim scrubbing. Uh, Attachments is something very exciting. Uh, And then change health is working on some prior off and some other things that we are excited to adopt in the software to just really bring that complete comprehensive end-to-end experience to our our client base and, you know, offer a, a better level of service. So that's what, that's what we're excited about. And we're glad we think we, we think we backed the right horse here. And so far everyone's been great. We've had outstanding customer service and we've sent now billions of dollars of claims through change healthcare. So we're, we're definitely uh, dedicated to it at this point. Yeah. Thanks for that. And I'll just add, you know, a couple, couple things about the future and this applies to, broadly at, at change and how we work with companies like the Infuse and then how we're working together, right? So first, uh, on a broad basis, we believe that there's a tremendous opportunity for companies like we Infuse to have an impact on how healthcare is delivered, to reduce the cost, uh, remove administrative, you know, reduce or remove administrative waste. And we hope that by making these APIs available, it allows you know you all uh, we infuse and others to be inventive in how you use that and what the workflow is, and the power of the data, the opportunity to do it completely differently. You know why do we do things the way we do in healthcare? Can be questioned when you can break apart. It's like uh, breaking apart the recipe. You've got the individual ingredients instead of the whole plate being delivered as an entree. So it gives you a chance to to create new new and different types of entrees with those ingredients. Awesome. And Sarah, you just kind of leaned into it just now. And if you guys would give me an example, just for our our users that are not as technologically advanced, you talked about sort of the older feeds and now what it looks like with change. Can you, can you give us an end user example of how it may look different for them? Brian, I'm not sure if you want to take it from your angle or if you want me to answer. So I'll pause and see if you want to tackle it first. Um, I don't know. I think we haven't let Cecile say enough here. So what do you think, Cecile? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm going to prompt you. I'll lead you a little bit because I, I think you understand this more than a lot of us in the call. Cecile probably speaks to our actual client base more than anyone here. Um, but, you know, dealing with clients who originally had a separate revenue cycle system, I think is the best example compared yeah. to having everything together. If you share about that, I think that would help. Yeah, yeah. I think the the thing that my team and the clients we're working with now are most excited about is, like Brian said, usually their kind of whole front end process. So everything from when they get their patient, enter their order, finish their clinical documentation, manage their inventory, would all be living in WeInfuse. But when it came time to actually submit a claim, they had to go to a separate system, type in all that patient's info again, build out the claim, submit it from there. So there's kind of the... I think the burden of just having to type a bunch of things into two different systems. And then if you ever need to go back and look at it, you know, you have to log into two different places to see what happened with this patient, this date of service. Um, So it's just kind of a, a lot of back and forth that becomes really hard to manage really quickly. Um, So moving that all under kind of one umbrella for us and our clients is super exciting. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add to that. Just we have an analytics suite we built, you know, on top of our entire platform. But uh, some of the most important analytics our clients are looking for, um, like patient responsibility and balances, uh, margin estimations, things like that. When you don't have that last piece, uh, it means you have to use yet another system to then combine data from two systems, and they're coming from different angles, and their IDs are different. And I mean, it's just a hassle of healthcare in general with a lot of the way things are run today. But uh, we no longer have to do that with. The, you know, that change offering this piece means everything can be a one system. And that means the reporting is seamless. So as soon as a treatment note is completed and a claim is sent out the door, we automatically have, um, and then when that remittance comes back, we know exactly what the margin is on that therapy, patient's responsibility. And we can communicate that, you know, directly back to the patient. So on the patient side too, there's just 
say faster and more uh, clear flowing uh, set of data. And so we're, we're excited about, you know, offering that when we don't yet know all the new things we can build. I think Sarah, you mentioned it, like you get this one thing done and the next thing done. And we kind of talked about it like building a pyramid here and now we can, there's new opportunities all the time uh, that are coming out of this and we're excited to see what we can do next. Exactly. Uh, and I'll, I'll just add to that a uh, couple of distinguishing points about the developer, which we spoke about earlier. The developer of today is trained in the latest technology, the latest languages. And I think what Change did uniquely was make sure that the way we deliver this technology is as modern as possible. And that makes it easier for a developer to accomplish this. And therefore, what you just talked about, Cecile and Brian, is effectively removing administrative waste from processes, going having to go from multiple systems, manually recreating data. It is 2022. Why would we ask people to do that? Uh, so it just gives us an opportunity to take that out, streamline it. That's better for everyone, uh, less administrative cost and burden, and more accuracy and more benefits of having the data for analytics, right? Absolutely. So you guys have done a really good job of explaining, I think, how the workflow is going to get a lot better for providers, uh, less waste, much faster, better throughput. Um, and Brian, you mentioned the patient. I know, know both of your organizations well enough to know that when you're creating anything, you're thinking about what's good for the patient. So how do you anticipate this collaboration will affect the patients at infusion centers? I don't know if Sarah can talk about it. I know they're doing some new... Um, uh, they've launched a, a new collaboration with Luma Health, who we happen to also be uh, in an in integration uh, partner with. And I'm excited about that. I think patients trying to get information on uh, their financial situation in terms of insurance claims that are pending and their out-of-pocket responsibilities. I know we're leveraging uh, what we're getting back now from change to do a much better job of not only estimating patient responsibilities before they get therapy, and we didn't really talk about it. For those of you that don't know much about the infusion industry, the drugs tend to be on the expensive side. So this is a huge financial consideration for these families that have these chronic therapies. And they need to know what their out-of-pocket responsibilities are going to be. You need to be estimating them very accurately. It's hard to do that without actual claims information. So um, you know, looking forward to having the patient more involved in their care, helping them understand not only um, their future responsibility, but, you know, their current and their past. So we can keep up with that with actual claims data um, and then communicate that in a way a patient likes to communicate over, you know, secure text and messaging and forms uh, via Luma or via any other platform. I think that's really that consumerization of healthcare that we see. You know, we want to be with a partner that understands that. And for sure, just by change announcing that collaboration, it was pretty obvious to us that they are leaning in that direction. So Sarah, tell me if I'm wrong. That was nothing to do with that integration, but I um, felt like that was the move that was being made there. You're, you're spot on. We have five you know, pillars of, of innovation we're focused on, and one of them is that consumerism. And there's many ways we're rising to the occasion. Whether it's APIs we have now, like Care Cost Estimator, which is a newer release for us in the last year, or partnerships like Luma and making more workflow available. It's, it's all about uh, delivering on consumer expectations. And that's uh, by... By demographic, uh, you know, different different age groups need different things from that experience, and we're especially curious about the millennial and, and younger generations uh, who who are really moving a lot of their volumes to virtual care, home based care, retail environments, employer conveniences. Uh, how do you make sure that the you know healthcare industry that uh, that today has those volumes in our traditional health systems and medical groups? can compete and, and capture that revenue, you know, five to 10 years from now. Yeah. I love all of that. To borrow the words from uh, we infuse clients, sounds like you two are working together to create a frictionless patient experience. You know, nobody wants to be in one of our infusion centers. So at least if we can take some of the financial stress and the logistical stress out of it, then we make a little bit less crummy, whatever chronic disease they're dealing with. Hundred percent, and that resonates for me. One of the there's many partners that uh, that do work that I'm passionate about. This being one of them, M you know, I have a family member who gets infusion treatments and has an autoimmune disease that requires such, and you know, she's really close to me. So knowing the day the day in day out experience that she has and the struggles and so forth just really brings home how important the work we infuse does, you know, to to the world. Uh, I mean, in, in your scope of the market, uh, maybe not global, but how many people are suffering from this and the work you're doing is making that easier for them and inspiring, you know, that movement across the world. 
Awesome. Anything else on the change we infuse collaboration before I change gears? Okay. Well, while I've got all three of these brilliant minds together, I have two last questions for each of you. Um, the first is, what are you all most excited about right now in the infusion space? I guess I'll go first. Uh, can I say we infuse? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I think from from my seat and kind of my team seat, just seeing us grow over the last you know year, even um, the kind of integrations we have, the partnerships we have, the things we offer um, have changed and improved so much. So, kind of seeing that all evolve has been pretty cool, and just seeing us kind of have a I think play a bigger role in the infusion space um, as we continue to grow has been really interesting to see. Yep, I'll, I'll follow Cecile there. But yeah, obviously, obviously as the co-founder of the company, I'm very excited about what we're doing. Uh, not hard to imagine. You definitely want to work for a company where the boss is not excited about uh, what's going on. But yeah, we've got an amazing team and we're, we're just in a space that's changing so much. And it's fun to be healthcare in general needs a lot of innovation. Our particular niche of healthcare um, really didn't have, I mean, didn't even have a basic workflow. And so really helping to establish um, what other specialties I think have done over the years in terms of workflows. And I'm just grateful to have a partner like Change that is giving us the tools, giving us access to the tools that would traditionally be very difficult to get started when you're doing raw EDI and trying to read through translations and 835s and 837s. It's really uh, messy and it's hard for us to keep good programmer developers that want to work in that. And so it's, you know, they have the a good developer can work wherever they want to these days and everybody pays well, it seems like. So we want to um, give them difficult problems to solve, which we have plenty of those right now in healthcare. And we want them to, you know, have good technology to work on. And I think for the most part, you know, we're able, this is a good partnership because we're all going in the same direction there. So I'm excited about further innovations. I'm excited about some of the new opportunities Change Healthcare is providing us around uh, claims attachments, hopefully prior authorizations, um, and some of these other tools. So we're as they drop new things down, we want to pick them up and offer them to our clients. And from my perspective, there you just look at the direction of uh, of the populations that are going to need these kind of treatments. It's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. And if if we can get it right by working together with We Infuse and make that experience less friction, uh, you know, make make it a better experience overall for them. Uh, I just, to me, that's the impact that is what we wake up for at Change Healthcare every day. Uh, so if we can empower you to do that, you know, and you can you can drive that impact, then that's success for us. Awesome. Well, I'd like to wrap up with all three of you have a ton of experience, both in healthcare and the infusion space. If you could give just one piece of advice to owners and operators, what would it be? Um, I would just say it's um, healthcare has always been complicated. Infusion has always been complicated, but with the sheer number of drugs, obviously the cost of the drugs and just the changes that are going on um, in the industry, the challenges with payers and the different, um, I don't say games they play, but their, uh, their utilization requirements, let's say that it is becoming very, very difficult to do that without technology. Um, I would say, you, you know, the larger the airplane gets, the more technology you need to fly it. And I'd say that in infusion centers are kind of getting to that point where it's really just not, that's not wise to move forward uh, on paper and spreadsheets, uh, you know, on the backs of, of the poor folks working in the office. You really need some technology to help. So whether you use We Infuse or some other piece of technology, you definitely want to get with the program. Um, and when it comes to the claims cycle, the revenue cycle, whatnot, your change has got great online self-help tools too with their connect center and other things, but you really want to embrace technology. It is, um, the margins aren't amazing in this industry, unfortunately. So you really have to be efficient and then mistakes are very, very expensive because the drugs are expensive. And as we all know, we're dealing with patients' lives. So there really is no, not a whole lot of place, uh, places where you can mess up and it doesn't matter. It's, there's a patient on the, um, or we tell our developers here, there's a patient at the line, at the end of every line of code here. And so it's, it's not hard to find a why, um, but, you know, we embrace that responsibility and we hope we um, do a good job with it. But I would tell operators just to, you know, lean forward into the tech that's coming. I know some of it's new uh, versus some of the time tested, you know, kind of EHR stuff that's been out there since the 80s, but 
you know, but go, go where the industry is going, you know, don't, don't go back to where it's been. And I, as a new software company in the space, of course, I'm very biased about that, but um, also believe it or I wouldn't do it. You know, that's, that's my advice. You know, I was struggling to think what is the one thing that I would say, uh, there was a couple of instincts that came to mind. You know, one of them was don't be blockbuster and, you know, really think hard about where the future is going in healthcare and what are those changes that you need to make technology is a part of it, but it's how you use the technology, like, like your tool, like you said, Brian, so, I mean, that's spot on, right? The second thing is take care of your mental health in this space. It's, you know, working in healthcare is a marathon, not a sprint. And these are hard problems. And so take care of yourself individually as you go to solve them. Oh, blockbuster. I don't know. Cecilia, you know a blockbuster? Do you remember blockbuster? Yeah, blockbuster okay, yeah. was still my time. <laughs> she just Googled it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is It is a, uh, it is a slug. We are dealing with some very old processes. Thank goodness for change. And some other folks are putting newer technology on top of, I don't know if, we didn't talk about it and we probably need to wrap up the podcast anyway, but the technology that actually powers claims moving to the system, how you get paid is based on some very, very old technology. Sarah, I don't know how many years it is. I think it's like 30, 40 minimum. Yep. Uh, so the, the, the underlying ones and zeros are very, very old. And so all of the, what we're doing is really putting new technology on top of very old and it can make the, it's very challenging because no payer does it the same. Um, and I know it's thanks to change for trying to consolidate a lot of that before you send us that message. But it's, there's a lot of problem solving that's needed at every level. And the rules aren't always um, consistent. I know people don't want to hear that about healthcare payments, but it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty humbling to see how how bad it really is when you dig in deep. But you know, hey, hoping to everyone's working to make it better, and you just got to have good partners to do that. Yeah, I'll leave you with on that analogy. If anyone listening or any of you are ever in Seattle, the underground tour is the best analogy in healthcare because it, it visually gives you an idea of what it means to build new on top of old. So you'll have to check it out. Now I'm gonna gonna expect yeah, now, now messages to say who's coming to visit me here in Seattle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do the tour together. <laughs> All right, Cecile, do you want to wrap us up with your one last piece of advice? Oh, gosh, I don't know if I could give a piece of advice that tops what Brian and Sarah said. I think I I agree. We might be a little biased from the, the WMP side, but kind of the emphasis on technology and kind of looking at the tools that you're you're able to leverage, I think, from our perspective, is super important. Awesome. Well, thank you all three for your time. Thank you for coming together to improve workflows for providers and outcomes for patients. We really appreciate it. But there you have it. It's really exciting to hear from Sarah, Brian, and Cecile how this technology can improve the workflows and minimize wasted time for infusion centers. And it's always wonderful when we can introduce processes that reduce the hassle for our patients. It will be really exciting to see what these companies do next. Well, if you aren't already familiar with the WeInfuse software platform, I encourage you to schedule a test drive to see how they can save you time and money in your practice. And to learn more about the new billing and claims feature set, reach out to support at weinfuse.com. My name is Amanda Brummett, and we'll catch you in the next episode.